should read out on some research papers on this. Let's do this! A few moments later. model and see for ourselves, like the one here. Hey, Pishan. Huh? I hope Judith doesn't set a very hard table though. Me too. Alright, I think this shall be the aim of our experiment is to observe the effect of varying specific parameters on the formation of an evolutionary prism. Hmm. So the specific parameters we've been using will be the tip of the gomo, the sand depth and the basal friction. Okay. And then we can have a tip of the gomo of zero, a sand depth of five centimeters, and the grid of the sand paper will be 120. Okay. I think we can have three hypotheses. Our first one can be that the larger the tip of the decomo, the larger the critical taper angle. Oh, is that what Davis said in his paper? I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then I think our second hypothesis can be that the thicker the layers of sand, the less shortening will be experienced. I guess that makes sense because you have a greater weight of sand and you have to push with the same amount of friction of force. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Then our third hypothesis can be that the greater the basal friction, the greater the critical table angle. Right, because you have more friction, so you would create a larger angle, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay, that, that's good. It sounds good. Let's go! You got a fast car. I got a plan to get us out of here and work at the convenience store. Then it saves a little bit of money. I won't have to drive too far. Just cross the border and into the city. Discussion time! General observations Existing faults do not slip out of sequence and they get intensified with larger dips and greater slips. Moreover, the spacing between back thrusts stays approximately similar. Next, the occurrence of back thrusts can be reasoned to be because the forward propagation of the thrust sheet cannot maintain the critical taper of the thrust wedge. These back thrusts are also generally accompanied by vertical uplift and this is similar to what we have observed in our sandbox. 3D effect.
An interesting feature of the other side is that two of the four thrusts gradually increased in their dip angles at much as one as the shortening increased. In contrast, the original side only had one of these four thrusts and no merging of faults was observed. In addition, this side has more back thrusts in comparison to our originally analyzed side. The original side has three back thrusts that are spaced relatively equally, while the back side of the sandbox has five back thrusts that are more poorly spaced out. Let's now look at a plausible reason for the difference in observations on the two sides. As the sandpaper width was not long enough to cover the breadth of the sandbox, two pieces of sandpaper was attached together and used as the base. Therefore, the area of contact between sand and sandpaper might differ. This causes different frictional forces, resulting in a variance in deformation. Surface deformation. There exists a clear surface deformation where the four thrusts form. Indents at the surface are distinctively shown as seen in the picture on the right. However, for back thrust, the surface deformation is weaker and less clear. There exists as mere thin lines as seen by the picture on the left. In addition, we observed asymmetrical indents on the surface. The surface faults are curved, and this is likely due to the frictional force between the sand and the glass wall. The asymmetrical nature of the curves may be attributed to the fact that the attachment of two pieces of sandpaper caused uneven regions of frictional contact to be present. Time to compare some results! Here are the diagrams of sandboxes whose results we will be comparing against. These sandboxes have one differing variable from ours. With a thinner layer of sand, there are a higher number of four thrusts and a lower number of back thrusts. The critical table angle is of a greater value as well. In addition, a lower length of the final wedge is observed. With a steeper dip of the homo, beta, several characteristics were identified, including a higher number of four thrusts, a thinner final wedge, a shorter final length of wedge, and a higher critical table angle. As for sandpaper grid, according to Darlin's equation, an increase in basal friction ought to produce an increase in critical table angle. However, there was no significant observable relationship between these two experiments when the sandpaper grid was the only variable. We have identified certain areas of improvement for this project. Firstly, this experiment can be repeated a few times to obtain the variability of the experiments and to establish error bars. Next, the sandpaper used can be of a correct width to eliminate the error that can arise due to the attachment. Lastly, the sand can be prevented from escape to the other side of the wooden board by attaching the wooden board more securely to the base of the sandbox. The project can be further expanded through the tracking with particle image velocimetry or photogrammetric studies. This is good to quantify the strain that has happened, but may be expensive and may require complex instruments. Other material can be used to vary the internal friction, such as fine silica particles, clay and cornstarch. Additional sandbox can also be made by discrete element modelling. Ah, now I understand how the critical table wedge model works. Me too. But what are we gonna do with all the sand now? <laughs> Build a sand castle! Pew pew pew! Okay. <laughs> Sing some audio thing! <laughs> <laughs> so I remember when we were driving, driving in your car. Speed so fast, I felt like I was drunk. Sitting last night, I've been forcing it.